edition of the Grumpy Old Man Wrestling Podcast here on RGC Multimedia. Once again, we're hosted by myself, Rick Crabb. Next to me, Chris Filato. We're both proud as a peacock to be hosting this show for you, but neither one of us are nearly as wealthy as a peacock as we're about to talk about shortly. Oh, yeah. We had, we had plenty. We want to talk about, of course, the usual events with WWE, AEW, Shit Pack. Um, Do Japan. New Japan, though, we'll even make some of our Royal Rumble predictions, but we're going to start off with something that nobody in the wrestling world predicted. That the WWE Network is struck a deal with Peacock. Yep. For right. Only the U.S. only, from what I'm hearing. That's what I heard, too. I, I checked a few places. I watched what, what culture spin on and also wrestle with regret. What well, they had to say about it. Russell but. Talk said if they go to the Peacock Network, uh, their server is completely screwed up and you can't find anything. Right. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, from what I'm hearing is, if you already have a subscription, it'll be from $10 to $5, but you'll have to, it'll be kind of like Hulu, Hulu or YouTube where you'll be bound with commercials. And it's the only trade-off, but... Ew. But if you want some of the other programming, such as The Office, eh, not really. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, no thank you. Amy Poehler is so freaking annoying. <laughs> um, it, but one of the downsides with this is NBC Sports Network is actually ceasing operations and they're putting stuff on Peacock. So if you want to watch your EPL or your NHL, you have to go here. Well, uh, the, the, the side story on that is, uh, the, from what I've been hearing, they're going to go to the USA Network. Right. And, and hockey, I heard that too. And hockey night is usually Wednesday night. That means NXT, at the end of their TV deal, when hockey season starts, they're going to be moved. Well, just like AEW's battles with the NBA, I'm sure. But Okay, let, let's, let's get into this story here. This is according to Bleacher Report. WWE Network to be exclusive to NBC's Peacock. WWE reportedly earns $1 billion on the deal. This is from reporter Tyler Conway. WWE Network is coming to Peacock. WWE and NBC Universal announced a partnership Monday that will give the Peacock streaming service exclusive rights to WWE Network in the United States. Rick Cordella, Peacock's Executive Vice President and Chief Revenue Officer, released the following statement. Quote, NBC Universal has a long-standing relationship with WWE that began nearly 30 years ago with Monday Night Raw on USA. WWE has always tapped into the cultural zeitgeist with spectacular live events and larger-than-life characters, and we are thrilled to be the exclusive home for WWE Network and its millions of fans across the country. WWE Network is a transformative addition to the platform and complements Peacock's massive catalog of iconic movies and shows, as well as the best live news and sports from NBC Universal and beyond. And we scroll on down past a picture of Aaron Rodgers thrown against the Chicago Bears. Good for him. Joe Flint of WallStreetJournal.com reported, quote, Terms of the pact weren't disclosed. A person familiar with the deal says it runs five years and is valued at more than a billion dollars. Under the agreement, WWE will shut down its WWE Network streaming service in the United States in mid-March, and Peacock will license the programming, including the popular WrestleMania franchise, for its own platform. 
All pay-per-views starting for, with March 21st, Fastlane, will be streamed exclusively on the Peacock platform. NBC Universal owns USA, which broadcasts WWE Raw on Monday nights. WWE launched its own network in 2014, which boasts 17,000 hours of programming, including new and original content, along with the company's library of shows. Scroll on down. Service was instrumental in the launch of NXT, which was a WWE Network exclusive show until it began broadcasting on USA in 2019. WWE Network is also home to original series, including Steve Austin Broken Skull Sessions and the Monday Night War documentary series. Both excellent, by the way. Some WWE programming is already available on Peacock. From a pan, excuse me, from a fan perspective, the, this partnership is nothing short of a massive value boost. The Ad-supported version of Peacock is $4.99, a $5 monthly saving from WWE Network. An ad-free version is available for $9.99. So, well, that's cool. Okay, so you can get without the commercials for yeah. what you normally play. Peacock boasts exclusive streaming rights to The Office, Parks and Recreation, and the new Saved by the Bell reboot, among others. The combination of the two robust streaming services into one package creates strong value for wrestling fans and those whose WWE content consumption may have lapsed in recent years, looking to get back into the sport. Peacock's deal with WWE comes amid NBC Universal's plan to shut down NBC Sports Network. USA is set to begin broadcasting some of the events previously held on NBC Sports Network, including the NHL and NASCAR. It is unclear how much WWE will be affected by the change. Well, Chris, you may, you may have answered your question before about where NXT is going. It might go... The peacock. peacock, yeah, which, uh, which, <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. It, all it is is about money. Mm -hmm. Vince has all been about money. Vince doesn't care. All he wants more. He, he, it's one of the seven deadlies, and he suffers from it badly. Yeah, uh, and NXT. A lot of people would argue is probably one of the few highlights of the current WWE programming now. And um, you're gonna have to go to the go to the P. Cock to do it. You said it great. You said it best. P. Cock. Yeah. But um. But like, like I said, it's all about money. Uh, I don't. I've been shopping around for streaming services. I I myself have Netflix. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm thinking about dropping Netflix myself, going to Disney, and getting the ESPN Plus and all that for just for the same price. Everybody's cutting the cord. Right, yeah. And, uh, and you, these streaming services are coming at you left and right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got this. You got uh, CBS, which is going to be now Paramount, um, Hulu, Netflix, Disney. I mean, not a lot of people can afford all this. Right, it's a lot of choices, that's yeah, for sure. a lot sure. of choices. Um, I know, personally, yeah, I just started doing it myself. I'm I'm on um, YouTube TV, mm -hmm. which basically is... Probably as much as you would pay for a basic cable package. But it has... But truthfully, Chris, there's only three or four channels I would watch on it anyway. I'm not I'm not an HBO person. I'm not a Netflix or Disney Plus or anything like that. I mean, you know, I'm single, don't have kids. If, if that weren't the case, I'm sure it would be different. But, <laughs> well, I would get the uh, DC... I mean, I would get the D Disney Plus just for the Marvel stuff for me. You know? Right, yeah. But, um... Going back to this, I, I've heard stories about how the Peacock server is not good. Uh, if you go, if you go to the current, and there's a video on Twitter that Russell Talk put on their YouTube mm -hmm. of a guy who said he went to the WWE Network, could get any match like that. Right. If you go onto Peacock and you even type Amy Poehler's name, nothing comes up. Huh? That's nothing. interesting because I had heard. Back, I mean, not too long ago, there were also problems with the WWE Network on its own for that. It's like, just the menus were hard to navigate. And... <laughs> no, there's an invisible wrestler named Chris Benoit. <laughs> yeah. But, um, it's... It's hard to wrap your head around it. Yeah. At times, when you... The man has more money than... I, I'll keep on going back to the money. Has more money than God. Um, he's 75 years old. He's, I don't know, I, he is, it, it, this, this blows my mind. Uh, well, uh, what, here's what I don't like about it, okay? Number one, it's the rich getting richer, okay? Yeah. That's... Like I said, seven deadlies. But, 
the other thing is, it kind of validates the shit that they put on that network. A, there's no imp impetus to for them to actually improve their programming. Say, well, goddamn, pal, we just made a billion dollars. It was what we're doing. No, you did, but basically, right now you're McDonald's. Okay, flies are drawn to shit. Okay. <coughs> Impact, I guess, would be kind of like on a White Castle, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. But okay, I mean, you're Kumar. <laughs> yeah, AEW, I wouldn't categorize them as fine dining. I'd say they're a little better. I'd say they're more like Royal uh, Farm. <laughs> well, okay, we're going national. People don't know what Royal Farm okay. is. It's it's, it's a gas convenience store chain here in the Baltimore area, and that's great chicken in <laughs> Atlanta. Yes, excellent chicken. I'd say they're more kind of like a. I don't know, maybe... A Denny's? Maybe, no, I wouldn't say Denny's. They're a little better than Denny's. I, 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 no, no, I, I'd, I'd, I'd put them more in like the Chipotle class, I'd say. But um, Ruth's Chris, Chris Steakhouse. No, no, I wouldn't go that far. Mm -hmm. I don't think any wrestling still hurts that much. Um, New Japan, I guess... Even no-sell land like a New Japan? Well, New Japan, that'd be a good sushi joint, I guess. Yeah. I don't know, but anyway. But regardless, okay, back to that. Yeah, I mean... They're hit or miss with their programming, and even the few thing, good things that he even had on Raw, like this past episode, there's just stuff that makes no damn sense. The booking is uh, schizophrenic. <laughs> the, the the network stuff, like I watched the Stone Cold sessions. He's a great interviewer. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. a great, fantastic interviewer. He's oh, got yeah. an addition to this. Um, the documentary series. I just watched the Chronicle with Bianca Belair Sunday, and it was excellent. Right. It was excellent. I mean, this is a behind-the-scenes stuff mm -hmm. of her being brought up in the business and the the problems she had. She has bulimia. Mm. Did not know that. Um, and like I said, she had problems where she had to go to a psych ward. Mm. Um, it's It was very eye-opening. And when they play stuff like this, and I watch, um, I watch all the... Uh, the, the podcast with um the, I watched the New Day uh, Brody uh, tribute. I watched the um, Lillian Garcia podcast. They're very good interview shows, and they're very they had great documentaries. Other than that, it's just WWE. They have talent. Ha the talent is not the issue there. They have a lot of talented people. It's just problem is you get Saturday Night Live writers working there now. They people have no experience in wrestling. <laughs> They're trying to write stuff like horror movies. I mean, I said this on a previous episode. Vince McMahon doesn't want to be a wrestling promoter. He wants to be Walt Disney. He wants... It's Walt Disney mixed with Stephen King. He can't even call his fans fans. He has to call them the universe like like we're in you know, DC or Marvel Comics. I mean, come on. Other promotions call us fans. Yeah. Other promotions call us fans. Impact, New Japan, AEW, Ring of Honor. We're fans. Right. And some of those promotions, they were probably thankful for the few fans that they do have. But. Yeah, even the Indies call them fans. We don't go, oh, this is the R M MCW universe. Yeah. Well, Maryland would be a pretty small universe for one yeah. thing. But, <laughs> but uh, like I said, I've heard problems with the Peacock Network. I've heard nothing but great things when the WWE Network started. They had their glitches like any other startup. But I heard it got better. Well, hopefully that's the case, too. One thing I had heard that might be positive for folks who already have Xfinity, they are, they are owned by NBC Universal. Um, so I had heard some packages for Comcast, you would get the Peacock included. So Okay. That's, that's, that's one positive for them. But True. Yeah. But, uh, but this schizophrenic booking, I mean, it's like... This whole thing with, I mean, that, I mean, for Matt Riddle, for example, God, why? Why do we have him? Seriously. Because he makes Vince laugh. He's, Vince thinks he's funny. That's what I've been hearing. <sighs> That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Well. He makes Vince laugh. Well, farts make him laugh, too, but, I mean, you can only watch so many, so much of the campfire scene at Blazing Saddles. Come True. On. <laughs> Even though that is a very damn funny scene. I'm the only th the, the, the other thing, we're going to Raw now, is what I saw last night was Cedric 
They're calling him Cedric Prime Alexander. And they just won the Raw Tag Titles. Now it looks like the Hurt Business is going to break up. And I think the Hurt Business is one of the best factions out there right now. I agree. They, I, I love the Hurt Business. The MVP's on fire right now. Yeah. I mean, the Hurt Business, to me, I mean, they're, they're a new four horsemen. Because, I mean, they're not only a good heel faction, but, I mean, they... They flaunt the wealth, they come out in the suits, and I mean, they come out with style. They're arrogant heels, and mm -hmm. I mean, they're perfect with that. MVP's a great manager, you know. I'd like to see them get like a fourth version and have him be like more like a JJ, JJ but. Well, he's more like a player coach right now, so. Yeah. And he's going to be easy out of that because he is getting older. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, great mouthpiece. He's probably the best mouthpiece they got right now. Uh, other than um, the guy behind Roman Reigns who isn't saying anything. Right. Well, they have a few other good mouthpieces, too. Randy Orton's good. Bailey's excellent. Um, How would you think of... Well, speaking of Orton, what would you think of the promo he cut two weeks ago? Uh, I mean, it's a typical... With him uh, my name is Randy Orton. I hear the voices in my head. I'm psycho. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> promo. But what was really stupid, and I mean... Is, I don't know if you've been burned, Chris. I have. I've been burned. Okay. When you were burned, did you want to put any kind of fabric? No. On? Would you be, I mean, I can see, okay, look, when Alexa shot the fireball at him a couple weeks ago, I can see him holding his eyes like, you know, he's like blind or whatever, but you wouldn't be holding your face. You'd be like, get me some water or, or something, yeah. you know, to, you know. Well, this just shows you how old we are. Remember the Ronnie Garvin fireball? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was more of a fire. That was the, the 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 paper fire thing. That was almost a shoot, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it was worked out between Ronnie Garvin and but, Jim Cornette, yeah. But, I mean, Cornette said he actually sends some eyebrow hair with that. Yeah, I remember and him saying he, that, yeah. He was afraid that Ronnie Garvin was going to kick his ass for real, you know, but... But, but they were that, that was one of those portable flamethrower things Alexa had that I've been seeing on like YouTube, mm -hmm. and it worked. Right, he over he over so being burned. I think. Right. Um. Then the promo happened, and we're getting what we're getting now with Alexa, which I'm confused. I'm confused <sighs> with what direction they're going with her. What do you mean? I thought she was going to win the title last night. I really thought she was going to beat Oscar. You last think night. so? Yes, I really think because we all know who's going to. Well, we'll, we'll leave that down the road for for Rumble, for the female Rumble. Right. Because we, you know, where I'm going. No, actually, no, I don't. But well, you want well, you want to talk about the Rumble now, then, or you want to talk it later? Well, we can talk about it now. Um, let's see. It's... The my female Rumble choice. The Omni Flare. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'd say probably either her or maybe Bailey. Well, I'm hearing, uh, well, that's what I'm hearing too. Bailey, and we might get by Bailey Sasha from Mania. Mm hmm. Which uh, would be a phenomenal match. I think so too. The thing is, it's got to be an extra stipulation or thing because we've seen them in all the stipulation matches. Well, no, that hasn't stopped them before, though. I mean, we've seen them in regulation match. They did Hell in a Cell, which that, I thought that Hell in a Cell match itself was the pay per view for me. Right. Yeah. If Flair wins it, mm -hmm. it's going to be against Alexa. It's going to be against Alexa because we talked about this off air a few times. We think. Alexa Asuka is Sheeta Abaddon light. Yeah, I would you agree. That. It's she because Alexa is now the creepy girl, and Asuka is the Asian champion. Right. And uh, yeah, like Vince is not watching the competition, mm. or somebody's watching it for him and tell him what's going on. Mm. Hunter's probably get Daddy. Here's what they do. Uh, well, and it's light and it's different because they're, Alexa's doing more of a psychological angle. She's basically a, what was that movie with um, Betty Davis years ago? Oh, Whatever Happened Baby Jane. Yeah, and it's what well, that kind of reminds me of a little bit. A little bit of that, a little bit of Harlequin, which he's done before anyway. But, yeah. And, I mean, I think it works for, and 
you know, and one thing about a lot of these angles, though, Chris, I mean, a lot of these people, I mean, now, we could find out a few years later so he could go to AEW and do a shoot interview with Chris Jericho and say something differently. But a lot of these angles, a lot of the wrestlers don't like. Moxley went on Jericho's show and you know, he complained about the gas mask thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brody Lee yeah. complained about what they had him doing there. I get the impression that Alexa Bliss is having fun with this. Oh, she's having way too much fun with this. I mean, it's... And that might... She's getting the push of a lifetime right now. Right, and blonde hair, boobs, I mean, that might be tickling Vince's taint, too, as Jim Cornette likes to say, but... Yeah. But, I mean, no, she, it seems like she's actually having a good time with this, and that's... And, I don't know, maybe... A lot of times, wrestlers say, you know, the more successful ones are basically them being themselves and raising the volume. Yeah. Maybe that is with her. She turned it up to 12. Hmm. She turned it up way up to 12. I mean, we saw almost like a Mick Foley thing last night with the three faces of Alexa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When we saw the playful playground Alexa, then we saw the original goddess Alexa, then we saw the, the hot Alexa. Yeah, the hot topic Alexa. The hot yeah. topic Alexa. Hmm. And... She, she, uh, she if, you didn't, if you didn't watch it last night, she had uh, Asuka in the Mandible Claw. All of a sudden, Orton shows up in RKO. Sir. Yep, 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 yep. Which, we didn't hear a bell, did we? We did not hear a bell. No. We didn't hear a disqualification. We didn't hear anything. You, you think it would be a disqualification. We didn't hear shit. Well, that was not the only... That's a bot that you picked up, but there was another one on that show. I don't know if you had seen... The clusterfuck with... The six-woman tag? Yes. Uh, Naya? Yeah. The choke slam? The choke slam and also the unintentional countout. Russell talk, talk about that this morning when I was watching the video. Um, I did not know about the countout. It was, it was a botch. Well, from what I had heard from... Various sources. Various sources, including one culture. They had said that... A instructed WWE referees to referee as if it is a shoot. Yeah. So it's like if they're out in the ring too long, they have to count it, and then you know. Is that why the not raw general manager Adam Pierce came out? Right. And made it official. Mister Card subject to change. Yeah. yeah. But um, we've been saying this. Nia Jax is dangerous. Mm. She's very dangerous. Somebody said last June after the whole Kari Zane thing, busting Kari Zane open, says she's going to cripple somebody or kill somebody in the ring. Yeah. Why they does Vince have a, a hard on for that family? Yeah, because they make them shit ton of money. The, they have for years, the Rocks, generations. The, the Rocks family and the, the Annoy family. I mean, it's the deepest wrestling family out there. They're. I don't want to say they're like the Mafia, but I don't know. They might have some connections like that. I wouldn't want to piss them off. Have you ever seen a Samoan mad? Not yet, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 just no, kidding. Just, just kidding. We don't. <laughs> yeah. But, no, but, well, I mean, I had heard in the past where it's like, I don't know, Eric Bischoff one time was afraid. Uh, he wanted to fire Ming over something, and he was afraid to do that. They, they said legit. He is the toughest man in the business. He showed his toughness in our area at the Safari Club. That infamous story where he bit the dude's nose off, that was... Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. But, Dijax, again, go, go, just fight, fight. Why do you have... Well, well, I mean, there's, there's other work. I wouldn't mind seeing her going to where we saw Kong pop up. But... Yeah, well, could you see her in Glow? Yeah, I could, actually. She'd be a perfect heel for that. Yeah, uh, for the Netflix series, not for the actual promotion. Yeah. Okay. Um, I said this last show, and I'm saying it again. The best female big girl performer right now is Jessica Havoc. She looks like she works total safe. Okay. And too bad she's where she is right now because they're getting maybe two, three hundred thousand 300,000 eyes on that product. Mm-hmm. Uh, when at the height of the invasion, the whole get together of the other promotion of AEW, they made a, um, a million views. 
Okay. Impact made a million views. That's that's including their Twitch. And that's close to what Raw has been doing for a while. Yeah. So. Raw's getting almost AEW numbers now. Mm. And AEW's not getting a million views. They're getting maybe at the most 900,000. All right. Well, I mean, they're splitting with NXT. It's kind of like splitting at an audience there. So. Well, once the hockey thing takes over, their their numbers are going to dr go dramatically up. And um, like, uh, not, not as dangerous. I mean, that. What was the other thing that really irked me last night? Um, the the repeated um matches. I know. I realize because of COVID, a lot of people can't be there. And now that I'm hearing with the travel restrictions being back on, mm -hmm. a lot of the foreign wrestlers may not be able to get to the shows. Like, you might not see Pac on AEW because they ship him in from England. And he's part of that UK band. Yeah. Um, the New Japan guys may have to rely on the Japanese guys only now because they were just now letting the guys in. Right. Um, It's gonna. It's gonna, the band's gonna try to hurt a lot of people in every every promotion. Oh, of course. It's going It's business. I mean, it, 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 bow down the facts. It's a business, and business is making money. You can't make money if you don't have the performers. All right. But, well, go ahead. Well, maybe Sleepy Joe can join the United Nations Kiss My Ass Club. It sounds like that's what he wants to do, and maybe he can get some of these countries to ease up on that a little bit. Well, like I said. Um, and uh, speaking of which, WWE had their India special today. Yeah, I and I just missed that. I was going to read a recap of that. Um, I know Jinder Mahal, the supposed Indian, actual Canadian, was there. But who all was that? Uh, I heard Kali was there. Oh, uh, okay. A lot. Of, oh, I don't know if Gama Singh was there because he was supposed. To, he's one of the legends of India. They're, they're, it, they want to start in NXT India. They want to have a performance center in India. Mm. India does have a market. Uh, about two, three years ago, Impact did a bunch of TV tapings in India, and they did pack a house. Okay. Okay. There is a huge wrestling market in India. Well. The thing is, about the women. If, if it's a certain section of India, they can't perform. Ah. Yeah, if you get my draft. Um, Does my like the Abu Dhabi Saudi Arabia nonsense? Yeah, well, yeah. well, Saudi Arabia the first women, but they had to cover up. Right. Yeah. And with Abu Dhabi, you had uh, Alexa versus uh, Sasha, and they both had to wear body suits. Right. I remember that. Um, but <sighs> we don't know. Uh, like with this virus, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what direction to go right now. <laughs> Even though the vaccines are being handed out, and what uh, what was the thing I sent you the other day where, uh, about um, the vaccination deals with the WWE about uh, how 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 Vince is saying you're on your own to get the vaccine, you're on your own, you're in. He's going to use that independent contractor bullshit again. He yeah, it's funny how he uses it. You're independent as far as that, but it's like if you want to do a YouTube or a Twitch, Twitch channel for video games, you know. Now we we need we need to sign up with that. You know, we need to get a cut of that. I can't wait for the first real good shoot interview with Selena Vega. I cannot wait for that to come out because mm. she's going to put scorched earth on Vince. Of course, even though that, her, that won't that won't happen until her husband's out of there. I, I I'm think. hearing that he is in. They're, they're going to let this die down. Then they're, uh, he's going to make a big comeback and get a huge push. That determined wait to be seen. Right. Because we don't know what she's she's going to do. Mm-hmm. Alistair might say, hey, do, do, do you do you. Do what you got to do. And she does a shoot interview. If she goes on You Shoot, uh, one, of the, one of the podcasts, um, you name it. If she puts Vince on blast, you might as well say Alistair's gone. Mm. Maybe, maybe she'll go on clothes for sale one day. <laughs> yeah, but um, well, she does an only um, only fan site uh, for her cosplay, right? And that's just for her cosplay. And I remember when everything got clamped down, 
And they weren't traveling. They weren't making the travel money. They weren't making the merch money. This was slump supplementing them. All right. And now Vince is like, you can't do that because you can't make your own fucking money? Uh, and it, bl- it blows my mind that they used the independent contractor. Independent contractor. Yeah, they're doing... <sighs> no chance. That's what you got. Yeah, no chance in hell, yeah. Mm. And, uh, I get, um, and also why Selena was ve- uh, f- fired, because she wanted to start the whole union thing. Right. Her and, her and Paige. Mm. And Paige is going to be on backstage this Saturday for the Rumble. I'm envious of the type of union that Alistair Black belongs to with her. but Yeah. yeah. But it's... W- would you see a union within five years? Hell no. Because of Vince? Or Vince. because of Vince, Tony Khan, Callis, and uh, uh, I'm all, uh, uh, um... What the fuck was the guy? The guy's name uh, runs Impact. Uh, Scott Demore. Yeah. Um, Bushida Road in Japan. Um, and whoever and uh, Sinclair. I mean, never say never, but I don't see it coming though. I think, I think the promoters will be fighting that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, didn't Jesse wanted to start that back in the nineties? Yeah, and yeah, Hogan stopped him. Right. Well, Hogan knew where his his red and yellow bread was buttered. You know. Yep. And, oh, did you hear about the Legends show uh, a couple of weeks ago when Hogan showed up mm, backstage? Not really, no. He was treated very coldly because that, vid- that Bubba the Love Sponge video is still out there. Oh, uh, okay. Where he said some racial slurs. Right. And th- he, this younger generation looks at him like he's a racist asshole. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um... He was treated very coldly, <laughs> and uh, if he's going to, that's going to be a stain on his name forever. Yeah, well, he might need Booker T to cut another promo against him. Speaking of old men, <laughs> uh, Ric Flair, ooh, the whole Lacey thing. He's seventy-two years old. He's, uh, they're trying to make him off as still the nature boy, as Space Mountain. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, mixed feelings about that. I mean, yeah, he's... You're of two minds. And all that. You're of you know, two minds? Yeah, and we're not that far from that age ourselves. Yeah. I mean, 20 years from now, if a Lacey Evans came up to us, you know, wanted to ring our southern bell, I don't think either of us would say no. No. I mean, yeah, yes, we might be a little bit of, well, I might because I went through a 12-year sentence of Catholic school. I might be a little bit of <laughs> But then again, I, I blame Catholic school for some of my other... Yes. Here's the thing uh, that, uh, that I, I flashed back what I saw last night was um, when he's teaching Lacey how, how to get on holds. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of Triple H and Trish. Oh yeah, yeah. When that's exactly Stephanie right. walked in, right? And that's that, like that. It's like they're rehashing this, but it's different de- demographic now. But on the same token, though, I mean, it was like my my favorite YouTuber at um, Simon Miller commented about this. It's like on one hand, yes, they're trying to make Ric Flair a heel for doing this, and Charlotte kind of a baby face, but. He's like saying you're you're spending all your money on her and not on your family. It's like, okay, number one, Charlotte, you're getting paid pretty well there. You're getting okay? paid more than your old man now. Exactly. Your old man was bankrupt. That's why he's doing this. Yeah. Okay. Number two. He's paid all the money for four wives. <laughs> number two, it's like he's a grown man. It's like, Charlotte, fuck off. You know? <laughs> Even she called him an old man last night. Well, he is an old man. He is an old man. He's he, starting to look like George Washington. Yeah. <laughs> He's a dirty old man. He's a dirty, yeah. And he's a player. <laughs> he, what, what did he used to call himself? The Wheeler Dealings and all that? Yeah. But, um, it's that. What was the other things on Raw last night? It drove me completely out of my mind. Because I don't remember a lot last night. Because <laughs> I was just. 
playing video games with my hand. I have a PSP. I was handheld, and if there's a piece of if there's a draw on there that I don't like, I'm playing a video game. Right. Yeah. I was like, ADD is a wonderful thing. Um, I it, even Ollie Davis, who on uh, Russell Talk called the show last night poor. I mean, he called it awful last night. You're supposed to be the top wrestling organization in North America, in North America, if not the world. If you put out shit product, something's wrong. Like I said, they're McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, they're. I mean, <laughs> what am I making? Put a Big Mac up against a Five Guy Burger, okay? But who sells more more cheeseburgers? You know. True. <laughs> All the wimpy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yeah. Well, um, we're recording on Tuesday, and the other all of us are getting fucking paid. Oh uh, yeah. So. But um. I saw the lineup for Impact tonight. Um, you're going, it's, it doesn't look like a good show, but it's, it's, you'll probably get more wrestling action in a two-hour show than you saw three hours last night. And that's true. And look, I talk crap about them a lot, but I mean, they do have a good women's division. I Second to the NXT right now. Yeah. Because NXT's women's division is stacked. Mm, yeah, in a lot of ways. Giggity. But. Oh, Speaking of which, did you see the uh, woman's tag match from NXT last week? No, I did not. Did you see the finisher? Uh, no, the only part of NXT I saw was the ending with um, Finn Balor. But Casey, who, um, Ricochet's girlfriend, Casey, what's her name? Uh, the Ninja Warrior chick. Uh huh. Uh, did a spinal tap, spitty corkscrew splash, 460, whatever the fuck it was. Okay. It was spectacular. It was spectacular. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was it was something that you could tell she's been working out with Ricochet. Okay. Wikipedia be your best thing, but um, um, it's again the women's division is great. It impacts women's division second right now because you got Diana Perazzo who's on fire right now. You have. The the women's the knockouts tag champs who I don't know, uh, um, Kira Hogan and uh, Tasha Steeles. You saw Tasha Steeles in NWA. You didn't right. think much of her uh, like I didn't. Yeah. Uh, but it, Kira Hogan carries that team. Um, well, no, actually, I, I think I like Tasha Steele more than you did. Okay. I, like I said, I didn't think much of her when I saw her in NWA. She <laughs> she looks like she stepped up her game a little bit. Yeah. You have Nevaeh and Havoc. You have, um, I'm hearing for a one night only, they're going to do, bring back ODB. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes. Um, Old Dirty Briscoe. Yeah. Old Dirty Briscoe. Um, <laughs> you had, you have, who gave at the pay-per-view, uh, Hogan and Steele's the tag titles, the knockouts tag titles, Gail Kim, who still works backstage, and you got, no. uh, but, mm. <laughs> and you got, right. and you got, um, Madison Rain, who's just retired from the business. Mm -hmm. I've been watching Impact with the new commentating team. Yeah. It is D'Lo Brown and Matt Stryker. You don't like Matt Stryker that much? Matt Stryker's growing on me. Yeah. D'Lo, it sounds like Matt's the heel commentator, and D'Lo's kind of like the counter to that. Right. And I would rather see D'Lo be the heel, because I thought he was a great heel in, in, in the nation. Well, get to that with the announce team. I haven't watched NXT in a while. Is, um... Beth is back. Beth is back. Beth is in... back. Is Stu Bennett there too? Yes. Okay. Uh, Wait, Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett. Stu all. I the got ben, some ben, bad news. Company. I ben. got some bad news for you. Wade Barrett. He's Wade Barrett there. He's Stu Bennett everywhere else. But yeah, yeah he, he's he's a good announcer. I'm, that, that was a good pickup for them, I think. But um, uh, um, there's more matches to that. Um, right. but like I said, I. They're going to have AEW going back to their women's division. They're trying. They are trying mm -hmm. something with the women. It surprised the fuck out of me that they're they're doing something with the women. Right. They're having this knockout um, elimination tournament. Mm hmm You know who I see predicting winning this thing? Who? Everybody's favorite creepy girl. I think Abaddon's going to, it's hers to lose. Okay. It's hers to lose. Uh, Thunder Rosa. Mm -hmm. Probably going to be in it. They might bring Allison K back. Um, I hope they bring her back because I think she's great. I, and, and one girl from 
NWA we haven't seen come to AEW yet. I would love to Camille. see Camille. Camille will be another one. Oh, yeah, definitely Camille. That's even, but I was going to say Marty Bell. Yeah. Since she's friends with Allison Kay and they wrestled each other and as teammates yeah. a lot. So Well, I'm hearing Marty might go back to Impact. Oh, God. Because, uh, she... Marty, please, you can do much better. Well, Marty was uh, her, Mia Yim, and Taryn Terrell called themselves the Dollhouse. Remember that? I'm trying to forget, but anyway. Uh, like I said, it, uh, I can't wait to see how this plays out and how they're going to book these things. <laughs> if it's, if they're going to put it on dark like they did with Mo or YouTube like they did with their tag team tournament, mm -hmm. the women's tag team tournament, which right. really pissed me off. Why? Because they should have been part of the show. Should have been part of the main show. Yeah, but I mean... But the the best part was who was doing commentating during that. It was Tony Schiavone mm -hmm. and Veda Scott. Well, the nice thing about putting it on YouTube, if you have the YouTube premium, you don't have the commercials, and you don't have the picture-in-picture, picture, it's great, fans. We'll be right back. You know, you don't have any of that bullshit. Well, they, both promotions do that now. Both uh, NXT and uh, AEW do that I now. wish they didn't. God. It, uh, yeah, it's like... It's like... Commercials are usually the toilet break. Now you have to right. wait around. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to do this? Well, yeah. So, we're once again with Bleed to Report, and they have... Their predictions. Yeah. The was as of Tuesday the card for the Royal Rumble. We'll go through their predictions for the main uh, main event, and then we're gonna go through the rosters for each battle royal. Well, I mean, they also added the uh, women's tag title match on there too. And do they? It's, it's not on written on there, but it's uh, they announced that last night. Who and who are they facing? Uh, Oscar and Flair versus Shayna and Nia. Okay, all right. That, I think yeah. Nia and Shayna are gonna get the belts back because. Oh. You got Oscar being with Alexa, Charlotte being with uh, Lacey. And that's one thing. He, male or female, WWE just hates tag teams. Why can't they have tag teams? Vince never loved Vince tag teams. He, he admitted he doesn't like tag teams. He's been saying that for years. Yeah. Well, he's a senile fool. But anyway. Yeah, we know this. All right, so. Bleacher Report gives... Their predictions for the four main events, we'll say, okay? Yeah. The WWE Championship between McIntyre and Gold Turd. Um, they predict McIntyre. I agree with that. I agree wholeheartedly with that. I know you do, too, because you don't like Goldberg as much as I don't. Right. Uh, and I'll tell you what, Chris, you might be watching more of the WWE for me if that happens, because I do not want Gold Turd to have that belt back. Well, you'll watch SmackDown because he's not on SmackDown. Right. Then we had the last standing match for the Universal Championship between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. The Blue Universal t title. Yeah. Um, it says here for Reigns. I say Reigns also. I think he's going to lose it at Mania. That's what I think, too. They're to maybe Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, or we might even see a certain XFL owner come back in. Well, I'm hearing that may be planned for the next two years. Wow. Well, because he's all for it. From yeah. what I'm hearing, he's all for it. They're both all for it. Because right. it'll be a family feud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Survey said. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then we have the Men's Royal Rumble. And we're going to get into some of the participants. But they predict a surprise run in by Brock Lesnar. No. Please, God, no. Yeah. God, no. Even though he, he did the Rumble last year. Yeah. Yeah, we're used to him doing five minute squash matches like he did with Ricochet in Saudi Arabia. Right. He actually lasted a good forty five minutes. Well, not only that, but I mean the thing with Brock is he's a part timer and he whenever he wins a belt he he goes off like hunting or Go far, do farm life, farm stuff. Farm stuff or I don't know, treat stable like a farm animal, who the hell knows? But <laughs> Put these antlers on. Is Put these antlers on. <laughs> point is he keeps the damn belts hostage and you don't see any title defenses and he's he big times Vince for pay per views and all that and Yeah, he he bends Vince over for money. Right. And the reason we haven't seen Lonisner is because of COVID. He's usually a short term Box office attraction, but he has no box office. Last time we saw him was at Mania when he lost to Drew in, what, three minutes? Right. Even the people in the Thunderdome and the Max Headroom TV screens, they, they're not paying for those to be there. Yeah. So, I don't know. 
So we'll okay. Well, we'll get to that as soon as we get to the lineup for that. As far as who we think it's going to be, we're hoping it's not not the beast. Brock Bork, Bork Laser. Yeah. The women's Royal Rumble match. They're predicting Bianca Belair. Me too. I mean, uh, give the girl her due. I mean, she's great. I can see that. I if they don't have her winning, I could see her doing like a. Uh, eliminating a lot of people and being in there for a long time. When I watch the Chronicle thing, they pro spotlighted her doing the Rumble last year as NXT talent. Yeah. And she did the most eliminations last year, and she was in there for 45 minutes. Right. Um, I And I hopefully Vince sees something in her. Um, because it, the BLN is still Vince and Kennedy McMahon. Yeah. Uh, I know Hunter is fully behind her. Mm-hmm. Um, I I stick with this, I stick with this prediction, but I got a feeling it's got to go to either two other ways, like we talked about earlier. Right. Okay. Well, let's scroll down to that. As far as, far as the participants that are in there as of now, confirmed entrance for the men's Royal Rumble match. We'll go through the list. You say yay or nay. Jeff Hardy. Nay. Jay Uso. Nay. <laughs> Although they're trying to build up a thing where he wants to challenge, I don't know, McIntyre or whoever has to rob out. Now, this might be actually a sleeper pick. I wouldn't be surprised if... Cesaro? Yeah, Cesaro. Well, they asked that Natty Neidhart, Natalia, just recently who her who the best wrestler in the world right now in the ring is, and she says Cesaro. He, well, he's definitely, I mean... He's probably one of the best technical wrestlers they've got right now. And he's the strongest pound for pound. Yep. And, we, I mean, we've seen him in CCW years ago, too. So. Claudia, Ring of Honor. Mm -hmm. um, I saw him in Chikara. I actually met him in Chikara. Yeah. Nice guy. Mm. Which is funny because he was kind of like the sidekick and lackey in those companies. But, like, his... To, to Chris Hero, yeah. Yeah, and Chris Hero, he's been persona non grata. But Yeah. Anyway. All right, so... Also, we have... The Miz. No, he's no. still got that briefcase, no. He's got that briefcase, and he's probably got another USA TV show up to sleep. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No. No. Uh, yeah, that I agree. actually is a strong pick also. I, yeah, I, I agree with you there. Definitely a strong sleeper pick. Also, who's underneath? Orton? I say no, because we'll see the return of the Fiend. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling we're going to get... He might get screwed out, yeah. We're going to get Fiendus interrupt us. Yep, and it's... Okay, Roadrunner, all right. Moving on, AJ Styles? No. No, nah, I don't think so. This might be a possibility, Daniel Bryan. This is his last run, from what I'm hearing. He, after this, he's going to go be a part-timer, mm. because he wants to spend more time with his family. Right. Um, so, that'll probably leave you a no. Sami Zayn, oh, by the way. The Sami Zayn shit from Friday was excellent. It Sammy was Zane fucking is awesome. hilarious. He, who knew, when we knew him as El Generico in the Indies... And Ring of Honor, that he would be a treasure that he is. Oh my God! Yeah, God bless Sammy Zayn. He was, that was some funny crap right there. Okay, now this guy was kind of getting somewhat of a push. I don't think he's going to Nakamura. Take? Yeah. Well, he won the Royal Rumble. What the 2018, 2016, 17? Mm-hmm. And the match he had with AJ was Wrestle Kingdom quality. Even though the Wrestle Kingdom match they had a couple years before was fucking awesome. Right. Um, I see maybe Cesar throwing him out. Yeah, I, I see a program <laughs> between those two. I would agree. Now, remember remember yeah. he said, um, two, oh, was it last week or two weeks ago when Cesar got jumped by, by the head of the tail, uh, that, where were you? And, he says, and Cesaro says, well, Tropicana is such a big place. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's setting up for something. Yeah. Now, this is what confuses me, Chris. We have Dolph Ziggler, okay? The very dogs. And you see him in the singles matches. You saw him had a great match with Cesaro. Where the bleep is Robert Roode? Or, well, Bobby might be stuck in Canada right now. He's Canadian. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the travel oh, ban. He might be stuck in Canada yeah, like he was yeah. during the beginning of this thing. Um, yeah, I and I even announced, I mentioned, yeah, Canada. Oh, my God. I had talked to the... About that on my baseball show about the Toronto Blue Jays maybe having to play games in Florida because of that bullshit. Well, but. here's the other thing: a lot of, going back to the travel ban, a lot of Impact guys are Canadian. True. They saved their Nashville, 
They just, For a while, they were taping in Canada, though, too, weren't they? They were doing the, in front of crowds in... They were doing for crowds in Canada, but when the shutdown happens, they were renting out a studio in Nashville. They're I, still doing it. Uh, I swear, us Americans, we're so rude to Canadians. I'm telling you, Mitchell right. Kelson, if you're listening, I apologize. You know, we're Americans can be dicks. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, well, I've been to Canada, and Canada's a very lovely country, and it is such a thing as Canada nice. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, All right. So okay. So as far as those men, is there any more down there? That's who they have listed so far, but like you said, there'll probably be some surprises. We'll probably, we'll we're, probably see some fiendus interrupt us. We'll probably see... Or are we going to get a nostalgia pop of some of the older guys that we haven't seen in a while? Well, there's somebody who made who did a promo we hadn't seen in seven months. We might, And he was the biggest pop for last year. He did one. announce his entrance into the rubble. So, his, so you think you know me. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll <coughs> he'll probably go after Orton as well. We don't know that. We don't know that. We don't know how far to spread between who's going to go in. We don't know who's going in. We don't know the number of the entrance. True. That's true. And the thing is, we won't know uh, if you've been paying attention. They said on backstage they're going to announce who the number one entrant in the female Royal Rumble match is going to be. And they're going to announce who the 30th participant in the Royal Ma the men's Royal Rumble match is going to be. Okay. Well, let's get down to the female match. Let's see. Uh, okay, now here they're saying they're saying, and okay, mentioning Edge, Edge, Brock. Yeah, let's see. Okay, all right. So we'll go down the women's list. Mm, mm, mm. Which one? <laughs> Take your pick. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Mm. Mo, hey mo. Yeah, all right. Here we go. Okay, so here are the confirmed entrants for the women's Royal Rumble. Shayna Baszler. I see her going as at number one. Yeah. I would like to see her going at number one and just last, maybe till the last four. Mm -hmm. And that, that's somebody who, she could be a sleeper pick, but I, I she deserves a better push. I mean, she's a buzzsaw. Big time. I mean, they, they, uh, why they stuck her with Nia? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Even mm -hmm. though, in back, the backstage stuff is funny. Mm-hmm. And our favorite hot topic, playground girl. <laughs> princess. Hmm. Like to go up and down with her on a seesaw. Like <laughs> that boy. Mm. But uh, Little Miss Bliss, I don't see her winning this. But in the pay per views between now and Mania, which is like Fastlane and I think Elimination Chamber, she's going to win the title. She's going to win the title, and she'll probably face... It'll be later in the year. I, you know, I mean, I can see that. Because she's got a rocket ship to her right now, mm -hmm. uh, a rocket to her right now, and she's going to, as Cameron Grimes will say, to the moon. Mm -hmm. Peyton Royce, I, 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 I hate that they broke up the Iconics, Chris. I really do. And, mm -hmm. Even though Billy Kay is a comedic, she, they turned her into a female Santino. Mm -hmm. uh, her comic timing is great. Yes. Um, I love her a little with the Ride Squad because I listened to the I listened to the Punk Rock too. I listened to the Blink One Eight One Eight Two. I was like, I laughed my ass off when I heard that. <laughs> I have on my resume Moss Pitting, mm -hmm. which in America they call Moss Pitting. You know. Yeah, yeah. She, she's hilarious. She's hilarious. And Peyton Royce, again, when she was blonde, you know how Vince is with mm -hmm. blondes. Um, Vince saw something in her. Got the three-week push. Got yanked back like everything else. And probably Vince got turned off by the accent, which he's, a, again, that's another reason he's an idiot. God. Uh, she, well, she's an Aussie. That's why. I know. So is a living oi, name, oi. John. Oi, oi, oi. What's your point? <laughs> okay. And like I said, Bianca Blair's a strong pick. Yep. They're actually the two under her are strong Yeah, they're picks. very Bailey, strong picks, yeah. Charlotte Blair... Your favorite thunder thigh? <laughs> no, no, no. I see if there's any sort of punishment coming to Naya for hurting girls, she'll be eliminated early. Mm. She will be eliminated in a mass exodus early. Who, you think? I think there's going to be a gang up on her. Oh, okay. Like <laughs> they used to do with Andre. Then you have Mandy Rose. No. no. And you have... Dana Brooke, and I'll tell you, she, I think she's the new Titus. I mean, she it's no wonder she's been part of Titus Worldwide. She, uh, she's the one who took the chunk slam last night. What well, yeah. was it, Mandy? 
No, it was Mandy. Mandy took the choke slam last night. Yeah. Mm. And they asked her if she was all right. She said she was fine. Mm. She's probably seen birdies for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tamina, who they don't use a lot at and, all. And I'm surprised Bleacher Report actually mentioned her last name. Because they've been cutting that off since... The, the accusations to her father during the yep. court case, yeah. Mm. Liv Morgan, mm. again, had a monster push at the beginning of last year, disappeared right. rapidly. Of course, a lot of that was the fans kind of pushing that because they thought she was going to ha be on the one on a swing set, not Alexa Bliss. But yeah, uh, or, or even with the whole Lana thing last year, at the beginning of the year last year with uh, with Rusev. Yeah, Ooh. and Ruby Wright. I'm sorry, but and it's a shame too because my goodness, Morgan Riot. Oh, my. the Riot Squad, a great tag team. A great, great tag. They, they are invited to my tattooed bachelor party. That's all I'm saying. But you know. uh, when if Shayna and Bianca get the titles, I mean, if Shayna and um, Nia, Nia get the tag titles, yeah, I say give it, you know, let them drop it to the Right Squad. Right Squad is it's their due. It's their due. Right, but I I would agree. But like a lot of people in that company to get. Uh, that aren't used properly. I mean, if they see them as just Place name here. Yeah. I don't think Vince understands as far as, like, Ruby Riot's aesthetic, especially, you know. Because she's not... One, she's not pumped up like a Barbie doll. Right, exactly. And she can actually work. Yeah. She can actually work. From what I've been hearing, Vince has been less and less at SmackDown. It's been more Hunter taking over. And, and we can see the results. Results, yes. And we're seeing more NXT influence type stuff on there now. Mm hmm. And with, with, uh, and with the ratings going down, even USA has said, told Vince, we need darker content. That's why we're getting the Alexa Bliss stuff right. now. Uh, not, pe not attitude era stuff, but just darker content. Well, I think also, too, you commented about why aren't they, a lot of people were saying, why aren't they letting Heyman talk? I think. That's brilliant on his part, because that's kind of like what people expect, and they're trying to basically establish him as being more of a slimy, wimpy lackey, you know? Well, he did that Friday night where he, he started taping his, he's in his suit, he's taping his foot, so then he acts like, car's subject to change. Yeah. I was like, brilliant. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Brilliant. That was awesome. I mean, that was, the whole thing with Adam Pierce Friday night was great. Again, NXT is the A show. The mm -hmm. B show is SmackDown. The C or D Z show is Raw. Right. And one thing we noticed, and Lisa Report comments about that, we don't see any NXT representatives. Well, the men if, or the we, if we get the call up from of one of them, it's going to be Rhea. Right. It's going to be Rhea. Rhea's, Rhea might be called up. And if Rhea gets called up, I'll be pleased as punch. I think for 23 years old, she's yes. the future of the business. Oh, right she's now. awesome. Her, yeah, I her, agree. And I, I don't know if you agree with me. Rachel Gonzalez. No, she she's a good monster. She's a good monster heel. They're trying to make her into the next China. Yeah. That's the only bad thing. But, but there, are, there are a lot of girls we haven't seen for NXT or otherwise. I mean, where the where's your girl, Nikki Cross? Where is she? Well, uh, she's been posting videos on YouTube. I mean, not on YouTube, on Twitter, saying she's frustrated. She's frustrated. I mean, oh, I when agree. was the last time you saw her on television is during the whole beginning of the position of Alexa Bliss. Mm -hmm. Where we all thought she was going to be the savior of this fairy, fairy tale. Right. You know, where she, she says she's going to be at the Rumble. She's going to be in the Rumble. We just don't know what, what capacity. And the male side. What about Keith Lee? Where the hell has he been? Who doesn't know how to wrestle? Send him back to the performance center. Somebody that big shouldn't have to care if he knows how to wrestle. I mean, that, nobody ever that boy that has ability out the yin yang, and the, does the shit that he does for his size, uh, athletically. Wow. Yeah. Wow, and this. The facials he makes, the facial expressions he makes are spot on. Yeah, oh yeah. Especially when he, 
when he was at NXT, and you see Johnny, Johnny Gargano, I, I forgot, it was a takeover in your house. He right, like he rises from the dead. You see him rising up from Johnny Gargano with his scowl on his face, like Johnny, run, just run, <laughs> run, just, just run, please run. He's gonna eat you, run, yeah. <laughs> run. Yeah. Um, if they do use any NXT of male side, who would you like to see them bring up? Mm. Damian Priest. Damian Priest, maybe. Kick Cross. I'd like to see even like Cole or um, Balor. Even Loomis? Uh, He's a... They, uh, even Cameron Grimes. Yeah. I mean, you, you got, you're stacked down there, too. I mean, you got guys who worked their way through the indies. Right. Uh, Cameron Grimes, like I said, when he was Trevor Lee, X-Division champion. Whenever he went out anywhere, he was a champion somewhere. Right. Um, give him a chance. Give him a fucking chance. Besides the stupid carny gimmick they gave him, or I mean, he's just a southern. He looks like a southern balker. You know, stands yeah. in front, outside of a fucking strip joint. Right. Um, with the the hat thing, I don't understand. The hat thing, I just don't understand. He's yelling outside the Kitty Cat Club in a kicks video. Yeah. Got yeah. Right. Um, and he wants to go to the moon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who else was at NXT? Uh, O'Reilly. Apparently they're higher Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I was trying to think which of them was injured. Was it Riley or Fish? I think it's Fish because uh, yeah. we're going to get O'Reilly and Balor against uh, Orkin and Birch tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Which I think is going to be great. I, yeah. I think it's going to be great. I Like I said, I watch NXT on Wednesday. I download and watch AEW on Thursday. So I won't know. If you watch it tomorrow night, you yeah. message me. Let me know what's going on. Okay. Um... Like I said, I'll probably watch Impact before I watch anything tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you, I'll give you my strong, honest review of the latest show. We said goodbye to Ty Valkyrie last week on, on Impact. Uh, they, we found out who really shot Johnny Bravo, and, and they did it so. And they did it as a comedy piece because of what Tommy Dreamer said. Yeah. Uh, and you found out it was Ty Valkyrie's plot all along, and they arrested her. It says maybe, maybe we'll send her to Jacksonville for a nice little stint in a, in a country club prison, or she'll go to Stanford and serve three to five. Yeah. <laughs> I saw. I, I was like, Bravo! You you turned into something. something you turned chicken shit into chicken salad for a brief second. Yeah. But they finally got rid of the whole Johnny Bravo shit. Mm. Uh, hopefully, they won't do stupid sh skit shit like that anymore. Uh -huh. um, well, yeah. Well, they're limited what they can do because of COVID right now. So they got to do uh -oh. some time filler stuff too, you know? No, that's bullshit. They can, they can, they can, oh, when they say, okay, they don't have enough people for matches, you make the matches longer. Yeah. You have them go Broadway and try to do it without goddamn commercials, okay? Um, the, who I think is going to be Rich Swan is going to be Moose. And I see Moose, if they're going to go belt for belt over Kenny, I see Moose versus Kenny Omega instead of Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. Okay. It would make a better sense. It would make a better way. Right. Because Moose, whole, for a man that size, again, can move like a fucking dream. Um, he's very athletic. I know he played football. Uh, he played for the Patriots, I think, uh, and the Falcons. Uh, he was an offensive lineman. Um, I, I, that guy did a Spanish fly. Okay, well, that, I mean, that sounds good, but do you think Overrated could, could keep up with him, though? Uh, you think he could work how with him? How many V-triggers do you think he'll put to him? Yeah. Right, do you think he'll get his big ass up for a span, uh, for a wandering angel? Because <laughs> Moose is, what, 6'5", uh, almost 300 pounds solid muscle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the he's their hoss there. Right. He's the hoss they have there. Um, but, um, that's not a moon, that's a leg drop. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a moose drop. Yeah. Um, too, but, anyway. <laughs> but you wanted to talk about the, uh, the, the crossover thing about how it, uh, of, of AEW and impact and the good brothers were just on being the elite. Right. And they were trying to make the uh, bucks laugh by using raunchy humor. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. 
Yeah. I don't watch Being the Elite that much because it just turns into skit comedy after a while. Right. And I'd rather watch the backstage segments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because John Silver's got the BTE t uh, title. Right. They're, going, they're, they're doing stupid comedy stuff just to, to retain the title. And Silver, John Silver, which I saw in CCW, uh, I he's a hidden gem. Yeah, he's a hidden gem. I know uh, Alex Reynolds. I don't know when they were together. They call it the Beaver Boys for some strange reason. Hey, oh, oh, yeah, the I Beaver Boys. They yeah. were CCW guys. Uh, they came up through the Northeast Indies. Um, I'm glad they're getting the spotlight. They are. Mm -hmm. um, and the best promo guy in AEW still is Kingston. Yeah, I would agree. Oh. Uh, like just let Kingston talk. Put him on commentating. Yeah, I, I would prefer. Well, him we have some good, I mean, you, I mean, you have him. You have Jericho. You have MJF. You have Taz. I mean, Taz is great. Taz is a great promo guy. He's always been a great promo guy. Sure. Remember uh, when um, was it uh, November? Remember '96 when he he dropped the bomb about the pay per view before Paul got a chance to say anything about pay per view mm. about barely legal the first one. Right. It says about that big show in April. Yeah. And I like what, it, what Joey Styles says, talk about stealing somebody's thunder. This is Grand Theft Thunder. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Taz is great. We were talking about managers early. Taz is a great manager. Yeah, he's a great mouthpiece. He could be the next Paul Ellering. Right. Uh, Kingston is a great mouthpiece. They have managers at AEW. Where you Jake got, Roberts, you don't see nearly enough of him now, but... Well, because he's high-risk, too. So. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, too. but in WWE, how many managers can you count? Yeah. MVP. And Heyman. Heyman, that's yeah. That's, that's it. End of list. Almost doesn't count as a manager. He's just Big Daddy Cool in a different color, shade of color. Mm -hmm. uh, and apparently fucking Vince thinks he's uh, HBK, too, so... Yeah. That would have been a dream match. If Michaels never retired and he's still in his prime, an A.J. Michaels match would be great. Oh, yeah. Um, but there's no manager. Uh, there's hardly any managers in Impact. No. Um, I think manager... Uh, I see AEW trying to bring it back, but is managers a passe thing? I'd say so, because, I mean, they expect the wrestlers to be able to talk people into the matches now. Yeah. But, I mean, the reason you had managers is because you had a lot of, I mean... Mumble mouth assholes who couldn't talk. Or, yeah, or you had, like, the foreign heels who supposedly didn't speak any English, and that was, you know... Well, remember, Kong had a manager, and it was a, uh, it was cheerleader Melissa under a Muslim kid in the Russian to Shahid. Right. And Kong could speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard her speak. She can speak. Well, Gorilla Monsoon can speak, too, but originally he was and supposed by, to be, like, from Mongolia, and he couldn't speak. And right? he was uh, managed by a wizard, wasn't he? Yep. Okay. Um, the reason I'm wearing a Bullet Club shirt, Bullet Club have now the heavyweight tag team titles and the junior tag team titles. You seen? You said you've seen El Fantasmo. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's working with, he's doing a loaded boot gimmick now. Oh, boy. Or he even took the boot off and says, yeah, I got a sock in his boot. What's in the boot? No, nothing's in the boot. He's, he's hiding the boot. Well, you know what, El Phantasma? Go fuck yourself. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and former Impact wrestler, Taji Ishimori. He used to work for Noah. Yeah. And that, and you got the sons of Haku with the tag champions. Mm. They're still going after Kenny... And, uh, what, he, what, he, what was that tweet I showed you that he called uh, Kenny Omega called him Kenny Omega? Yeah. In the bullshit club. Oh, yeah, exactly. It, or as Cornette calls him, the ballet club. Now, if this is a shoot, if this is not a shoot and it's work, New Japan's reinvading soon. Yeah. And I can tell you the first, first valley, as if he can come over the travel restrictions or not, would be Jay White. Since Jay White is pretty much, quote unquote, leaving the company, mm, you're right. and he's good for seven years there, if that open door opens, he's coming to AEW. He's going to be the first one to strike. You know what wouldn't surprise me would happen? What? I've talked about this on my baseball show. Right now, as far as COVID travel restrictions, the only 
think there's only two countries that is, I think that New we Zealand? can travel for non-essential business. No, Mexico and it was somewhere else. It would not surprise me if they had some AEW people go to like a AAA show because they do have an agreement with them and you see the bullet, some these Bullet Club people jumped in there. Well, they just did Triple Mania not too long ago in an empty arena show mm -hmm. uh, where Omega took on the Laredo Kid. Right. Which, your favorite, Naka 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 Naka. Get the <laughs> fuck off of my AEW dark and stay there. Uh, he was uh, Kenny's second to mm -hmm. the ring. Right. And he actually interfered in the match. Um, Kenny did the whole uh, clear gimmick down there, too. Yeah. Um, they had, Like I said, they, the Aztec Arena was empty. There were no fans. Uh, if they do do an invasion down there, it'll be in front of nobody. Mm. Uh, and I know Mexico is a huge market down there. Oh, yeah. As, as, as many shows as we've seen from the Aztec Arena, they sell that place out. Oh, yeah, big time. Um, I think when we were talking about bucket lists, I think that's that's the one that's in Mexico City, right? The yeah, the okay, Aztec yeah. Arena, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Lucha Underground was still around, me and you'd be going to Lucha Underground. Uh, I, no, you'd be going to Lucha Underground. That, I don't know. It, I, I too tried gimmicky, to watch, too gimmicky. Way TV. too gimmicky. It's like... It's like watching Mortal Kombat. It's ridiculous. If I want to watch Mortal Kombat, I'll watch Mortal Kombat. If I want to watch wrestling, I'll watch wrestling. Yeah. And this is my problem. This is where I kind of lean with the, our favorite tennis racket wielder on this, okay? I want my wrestling to be believable. I want it to... I realize, credibility. That's what uh, Ollie Davis said this morning. Credibility. Credibility. I, I don't expect it to be a shoot, okay? I know it's not. But I want, I mean, if I want to take Marvel Comics movie, I want to believe that, you know, Iron Man can fly and all that. Yeah. Okay. If I'm watching wrestling, I want to see guys who look like they could kick my ass and could actually fight. Suspend disbelief. Exactly. I mean, Terry Funk, he still scares the shit out of me right now. And he's like, you know. It's, it's like Suzuki. It's like Suzuki in Japan. And he scares the living room. Right. They use him to scare children to behave. I mean, usually, I mean, we've gone to bars where some of these wrestlers are. I mean, why people would want to screw with them, I have no idea. Would you? I mean, I I would not want to fight a Pac or a... The Brett, Tongans. An Archer or the Tongans, hell no. Orange Cassidy looks like somebody who works at a goddamn 7-Eleven. You know, <laughs> come on. Well, from what I'm hearing, before the, all the lockdowns happened... MCW used to run shows, and they brought the Tongans in, the right. Gorillas. They brought the tank pals with them to Jimmy Seafood. Oh, yeah. And I heard they are a joy to be around. They're real nice guys. Um, well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, they worked with Jimmy Seafood when they had the Bullet Club party at WrestleMania outside yeah, of and MetLife. <laughs> didn't you say Simon Miller got his ass kicked? <laughs> no, they chased him away. Yeah. But the thing was, for some reason, the what culture... Guys were acting like dicks though towards them. They were like saying all this stuff because, <coughs> I, well, I think they were they were kind of like having a feud because um, the one Bullet Club member, Tom, the main one, I forget. Uh, Jay White. Not Jay White. No, the uh, no main son. Oh, uh, Tamatanga. Tamatanga. He was going on. He was actually hacking into some of their videos and threatening to kick their ass and all this stuff. And then they actually went to the party. And then at first, you know, then I don't know if. Ming was, if it was a work with him or not, He, I think he actually thought, it was a, what, who's starting the stuff? What, the English? And he was chasing after them. He was going, <laughs> they were going to kill Simon Miller. It was funny as shit. Going back to the invasion thing, which we're thinking is going to happen, when New Japan did a show in California, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, when the OG Bullet Club turned on the elite. Right. And when they beat up the Bucks, Cody... Um, and I forgot who else was in the, uh, the at the time. Uh, and Adam Page, and when it uh, where they all thought they were all Bullet Club when the Tongans destroyed them. I wish I was there. The Tongans destroyed the Bucks. They destroyed. I mean, it was the Tongans, Chase Owens, and Taji Shimori, and Bad Luck Valle. That's the OG Bullet Club, right? And they destroyed Cody, the Bucks, Hangman. 
uh, anybody else who was going to go to AEW regardless. I mean, it, it was a thing of beauty it yeah. would be when you think about it. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to feel, what we're going to see again, a repeat of that if this invasion happens. Right. I'm hoping it happens. I hope the travel, travel restrictions get lifted. I hope we see the Tongans on AEW soon. Would you say, okay, would you see them go there to attack the Bucks? Or go there to attack the Good Brothers? Mm. Bucks. Bucks because uh, of the whole... Exposure the, plus... The thing is, the Good Brothers are doing the whole too sweet thing in one of the Bullet Club gear. Mm. And, the, and they're on both shows. Right. But I want, I'm wondering with all this if we're going to, even though maybe not because of travel restrictions and the Me Too stuff, I'm wondering if we're going to see Skrull in any of these companies. Well. Because, I mean, I remember seeing him, I remember seeing him on um, What Culture Show he, where he, he teamed with the Bucks and they called him, they all wore Bullet Club gear then. He's a, he is a member. I mean, he. I remember when he joined when he opened the umbrella. The umbrella. It, it uh, was it uh, at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Yeah. Um. Again, who's going to touch him? I don't know. Uh, would you see him go back to England and work for Rev Pro? I don't know. He might not have a choice, you know. Yeah. But uh, but I heard their restrictions are within. The UK or with that new strain, so, yeah. yeah. So um, with Marty, it's go. It's up to Marty. Yeah, it's up to Marty. Um, and you were talking about this on the other show. If they if they really wanted to make this multi promotional, I'm looking at him right on the right hand side. Yeah, bringing him and Sweet Charlotte. Oh, get all this. Yeah. Bring I, all this. I mean, we already saw Thunder Rose and Deed bring in the yeah. women's belt. Why, yeah, I'm that. And plus to see him uh, start up with Cody again. I... Well, honestly, you would say in an interview, he wouldn't mind traveling to territories to defend the title again. Yeah. Uh, how he won the title was in CCW against mm -hmm. Tim Storm. Right. Which, again, I watched it, and the crowd shitted all over it because it was a traditional wrestling match. That fucking furniture thrown all over the place. Oh. Um, and Austin Idol bringing... Um, uh, uh, I think it was Austin Idol who brought out Otis. Oh, okay. Um... He cut an old 1980s Southern Boy promo type bullshit. Um, ever since Aldis beat Tim Storm in CCW, has Aldis how long is that? How, what, three years? He's held that title for three years? Off yeah. and on because he did drop it to Cody, I think, one or two times. Oh, yeah, yeah, going all out. And all, all in. Uh, yeah. All in. Right. Yeah, and he did the something. Uh, yeah, the daddy and daddy. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, Aldis. Uh, I'm hearing. I'd love to see him against Omega. That would be. Uh, I'm hearing event. Zicky Dice is now a free agent. Zicky could wind up somewhere right now. Um, we Ricky Starks, who's uh, they're trying to mold him into the young Rock Junior. I don't know yeah. why. Um, who else has come over from NWA since the shutdown? Um, well, Kingston, we talked about Kingston, him already. Storm is going back to Impact. Yeah. Where's he like going to show up? I think he's still with the NWA Shockwave, you know, because... Mm -hmm. And right now, NWA is the bridge right now because our Ring of Honor, you saw Mike Bennett come in. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest things with the COVID I really regret, because I was really looking forward to that um, ROH NWA cross-promotion feud. That seemed like they were going to, uh, were going to start some really good things. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> the black. What did Bully Ray say on Busted Roping Radio? He says the black death happened. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like I said, it, it, it's going to be interesting with the travel restrictions. It's going to be interesting with this multi-interpromotional thing. It, it's going to be. We'll see what happens. And from what I'm hearing, WrestleMania will have some crowds. They're trying it because they're having the Super Bowl in that same stadium. And well, from what we're in the NFL is paying for twenty thousand uh, tickets for healthcare workers who have been vaccinated. I don't know if it's all twenty two thousand. I heard it was like 
seven thousand, seventy five hundred for some some of them. For them who are vaccinated and yeah. they're, they're safe to be around other people. Yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Well, Mania is going to be two nights. It's going to be there, and I think next year is in Los Angeles, or is it two years? That might be two years because I think they're going to down. When are they going to Dallas? That's that next year, yeah. yeah. When they did that stupid goddamn thing last week with the uh, Hunter and Stephanie at the, uh, the anchor desk thing. And Sasha with the wig and, yeah, and, for, and John Cena. Yeah. Yeah. What was John Cena's name? Oh, uh, I forget what it was. Hugh. Yeah, Hugh you can't can see, see me. me. Yeah, I was like, oh, God. He's trying to be like Ryan Seacrest, I guess. Uh, I don't know. He's trying to find a career after this bullshit. I think he's got a career. He, I mean, he's got an acting career. Hear, yeah, you hear him on a lot of voiceovers and commercials, too. Yeah. It, uh, well, he's got an acting career. Uh, that last movie he did, Cock Blockers, which I've heard is hysterical. The shit he goes through in that movie, I heard it's great. Yeah. Um, I can find him doing more comedy. Uh, he did... Uh, he did train wreck with um, uh, Schumer, Amy Schumer. Yeah. Um, and he's done um, uh, Daddy's Home too. Uh, like I say, he's good for comedy. He's done comedy pieces. He's done. Uh, he can do action. Mm -hmm. I don't see him as the next rocker Vin Diesel. No. Um, but uh, you want to wrap this up? Yeah, I think we're getting close <laughs> to it. So. Because this grumpy old man's turning into a tired old man. Right. And, folks, as I mentioned, we did say it was card subject to change. Because the last episode, I was teasing Chris for being a pussy for doing, wanting to do a show, you know, every other week. And we'll probably, we will be doing that with this particular episode. Because if we were going to do the every two weeks, it would have been the night of the Royal Rumble. Yeah. And wanted to discuss that card a little bit before we get and to too bad, it. too bad. The Black Death's upon us because I like going, like I did last year with Jimmy Seafood. When Edge showed up, the floor shook. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, in in the in where I was at, the pop was phenomenal. I, and where it was in Houston, it was deafening for our herd. Oh, yeah, yeah. No I doubt. would love to be watch it with other people. I would love to be at a bar setting. I would be in a really nice setting. We can't do that right now. No. Um, because I, I always said this, the Royal Rumble is my favorite pay per view of the year. Yeah. Because you get that, you do have that unpredictability. And ironically, here in Maryland, we have interference from Hogan and not that <laughs> Hulk Hogan. That Brother. Matter, yeah. <laughs> and on that note, all right, we'll see you guys the next time. Next time, next time, next time. Same right. bat channel, same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. All right, well, good night, dickhead. See you later, pots. All right.